dedicated to Gene Valentino this morning. It's 16 minutes after 7 o'clock. Okay, all right. Back to some serious business. Yeah, I'm going to turn it over to y'all. I'm going to drink some coffee. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so, Gene, a big week this week. You know, a lot of things going on. I mean, I don't even know where to start. We've got all of these issues with Hunter Biden. The judge, you know, has an opportunity, I think, to to do something there. You've got President Biden, who is a cognitive mess. I mean, he 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 gets up in the middle of an interview and at, at CNN and walks off this set. You know, I mean, it's just like he doesn't even know where he is, what he's doing. I mean, what are your thoughts about this week and... You know, uh, and also, you know, maybe we could lean toward Independence Day and what's happening next week and any of that. Anything you want to talk about? Oh, I'm glad you brought this up, Michael. And thanks for the quiz in the beginning. <laughs> but, you know, about the quiz you just did, most proud Americans, the Republicans and are probably over 50 years of age, the least patriotic and the least proud Americans are the Gen Y and Gen Z crowd, basically under 35. And it's if we get beyond all the noise of all the issues we can talk about in just a minute, my concern is that we take back the and re-secure the patriotic control over this nation. It's, star, it's, it's a multifaceted, multi-path initiative that we must put in place to restore the confidence, the pride, the honor, and the respect, not only for America, but America's flag, which we desperately need to do. Shame on us if we lose it and forget about it. The woke, liberal, left couldn't be happier to see Joe Biden being such a cognitive mess and allowing the inner circle of the deep state to maintain control and to continue to keep you and me off balance through Gino's three Ds, divert, deflect, and distract with the issues of the day that remove us from the spirit and the patriotism and their, therefore the commitment we should all have toward protecting this nation. Oh, we can disagree on issues from time to time. Come on, we do it every day. Who 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 agrees 100% of the time to 100% of the other guy's commentary? None of us do. But at least we show respect and decency toward each other in the process of that exchange. And we should continue to do it and think about that as we hold our hand to our heart on this coming, this year's celebration of the 4th of July. And for those over 50, make an effort to get those under 40 educated because they've been in a vacuum between COVID and everything else, Michael. They've been in a vacuum. It was Trump that promised at a gathering last week to restore the patriotic control and in public education, the control of public education being our number one priority uh, if he, if and when he returns to the White House, he promises to put in place an immediate executive order to cut federal funding of any school system that's pushing this critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, and political content stuff on our children before they even have a driver's license. And you know, Ron DeSantis in Florida is doing the same thing right now. His actions in Florida speak louder than his words. He's done it. That's why Floridians are are are, are confused as to whether they want to lose him as governor if he becomes president because he's done such a good job doing what must be what's what must transcend on the national level and i think that we're going to be okay if i walk away from this next week of patriotic thinking i'm confident that the system with all its frailties has the ability to protect itself we trip and fall and get our nose bloody from time to time and we're certainly experiencing that now but we need a we need a a, a real transformation of thinking and i trust it's about to come you know what one, one of the things that i did want to talk about this morning we got about 3 minutes left in this segment but you know yesterday the supreme court issued a ruling about race preferences in college which to me i don't know if you look at it to me it looks like that 
affirmative action is over with. I mean, if, if at least for the near term, if anybody brings a case about anything to do with affirmative action, it looks like this Supreme Court is going to say, you know what, there's nowhere in the Constitution that you can support doing this. And people have said this for 50 years. That's correct. So, what do you think about this? Well, it was only 25 years ago, Michael. Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor said that this whole affirmative action initiative will be about a 25-year initiative because the protections you need to put in place for the transgress for our transgressions of the past will be no longer necessary. Affirmative action may melt away because we addressed it. And now we need to make sure we protect the rights of every citizen and give equal opportunity to everybody, not only in the educational process, although through the school system, that's where this Supreme Court case began, but nationwide on all other levels of operation, government, employment, and so forth. You know, it's almost like this. The unions came about because because people, workers, were being treated so horribly. In this country, you, you can't imagine you know, 80 hour work weeks, no overtime. If you complained, they, you know, they would punish you, fire you, whatever. So the, the unions came about because of those issues that the, that the companies were, were, were utilizing against the, against the workers, you know, using company money, for example, that was something that happened in our country. They That's would right. You company money. You had to go to the company store and buy whatever you needed. So unions came about and stopped a lot of that stuff. But over the years, as laws came into effect to protect people from that kind of, of malfeasance by companies, you know, the unions became less and less important. Now, you know, unions are nothing more than a political tool for the Democratic Party. That's correct. That's correct. And by the way, before we run, a recent poll just shows that 78 percent of the Republicans and 72 percent of the Democrats oppose affirmative action in colleges and universities. So I'm just speaking to the facts before I even give you my opinion. That's that's the fact. And I think there's, the Democrats have, go ahead. 20 seconds. I want you to tell us what's happening next weekend. Gene is honored to be part of the Blue Angel Air Show in Pensacola. I will be flying my Icon A5 in front of 150,000 people across Pensacola Beach. That's my expression of patriotism there you go gene valentino thank you have a wonderful fourth of july independence day weekend and good luck next week we know that you you won't be with us next week but we'll see you in two weeks likewise buddy well wishes to everybody hey enjoy that very much three guys that love to say god bless america god bless america that's right